Hello, today I'm joined by John Friedman, Senior Vice President of Global Government Affairs. John, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Julie. Great to be here. Of course, of course. Now let's get right to it. There's a lot of talk right now about investing in the nation's infrastructure to stimulate the economy. Tell us why it's so important to build sustainable infrastructure. Well, uh, look, our water and wastewater systems today are in terrible shape. And um, in its most recent infrastructure report card, the American Society of Civil Engineers gave our drinking water systems a D and our wastewater systems a D plus. So that's where we are today, Julie. And then on top of that, the American Water Works Association released its own report where it said we're going to need to spend a trillion dollars over the next 25 years just to keep up with current drinking water needs. And that's just drinking water. So we'll probably need about another billion dollars for wastewater. So we have this huge challenge in front of us and we're going to need to make sure that Every dollar we spend, we spend as effectively as possible and on solutions that are going to be sustainable for the long run. John, how would you invest in a way that promotes sustainability? I would start with wastewater and I would take every wastewater treatment plant uh, that I'm thinking of building or upgrading and look at reusing that wastewater. In other words, instead of just treating the wastewater partially and then discharging it into our nation's rivers or oceans, I would treat it to such a high degree that it can be reused for things like growing crops or running power plants, which, by the way, here in the U.S. is about 40% of our water usage, or even filling drinking water reservoirs like San Diego is planning on doing today. And so every gallon of wastewater that we treat for reuse is one gallon less of wastewater, or I mean one gallon less of water that we need to take from stressed rivers or groundwater supplies or potable municipal systems and it puts us on a sustainable path forward. Now you're already touching on my next question here. I was going to ask you, what are some examples of that? Last year, California just came out of its worst drought in the past 500 years. And as California was coming out of its drought, the city of Los Angeles announced that it was going to recycle 100% of its wastewater over the next 15 years. And it's today it's already recycling about 17% of its wastewater at a plant called the West Basin Municipal Water District. So this plant takes 40 million gallons a day of Los Angeles City wastewater that was being discharged into Santa Monica Bay and now treats it so that it's being reused to recharge the groundwater, it's being used for irrigation, and it's being used for industrial purposes. So that's, that's really an ideal example. And then it's not just a West Coast phenomenon. Even here on the East Coast, Nassau County, which is on Long Island in New York, last year just opened its own wastewater reuse plant to take wastewater and reuse it for irrigation and industrial purposes. And that's because there it wasn't a drought. It's just that they were drawing more water from their gro the ground than was sustainable. So they had to take pressure off the groundwater supply, and they're doing that by reusing their wastewater. John, clearly right now in this moment, we're facing a lot of challenges. Tell us why this is a moment for optimism. Uh, well, this is a terrible time for the world with COVID-19, but there are some reasons for optimism. One is, you know, uh, organizations around the world are coming together uh, in terms of water issues to try to make sure that people do have access to clean water where they need it. The World Bank's the perfect example. They're engaged in 100 countries right now providing COVID-19 relief, including water. And also, I think here in the U.S., the government is looking at ways to stimulate the economy. And one of the things it's looking at is an infrastructure plan. And if there is an infrastructure plan, uh, which seems likely at this point, there would be tremendous investment in water and wastewater, which is really needed. And the only data point uh, we have on that right now is that the Democratic uh, majority in Congress has released uh, its draft infrastructure plan, and it calls for $760 billion of spending over five years, of which about $80 billion is for water and wastewater. And so just to kind of give you a 
frame of reference, that would be about five times the amount of federal spending on water and wastewater per year that we're currently seeing. So it could have a huge impact on putting our nation on a sustainable water path forward. Great, John, we'll leave it right there. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Of course, and to learn more about sustainable water technologies and solutions, you can visit watertechnologies.com. Thank you.